Borg presents Return to Malice. This is Gary Butterfield. This is Cole Ross. And we're both on the cover of uh, Villains Weekly. Mom, I'm podcasting these other people's lives. Yeah. Uh, welcome to uh, a, a, a medium episode for season four. Yeah. I yeah. like this. It's just, it's firmly medium. Yeah. It's it, yeah. it, it, it's it's a strange one. Um, this is something uh, the, the the commentary unlocked something about this for me, uh, which okay. is uh, they, they they were talking about like oh people uh, accuse Doc of always writing these like tearjerker like bond, you know just uh, like just uh, kind of emotional things. I was like actually yeah, Doc does end up being a little bit more about the uh, about the touchy feely stuff. Like there's no action in this at all. No. This is this is very. There's like two dock modes, and it's like hang out and talk mode or fuck with structure mode. Yeah, you know. Or I guess there's also like deep deep lore. Yeah, you know, in reference yeah. mode. Uh, this is definitely the fuck around and talk mode. Mm-hmm. Um, and rarely are they so separate. Yes, you know, like even you know Jackson episodes will still have some heart, mm-hmm. you know, to them. Doc episodes will still have like some interest, you know, some action to them mm-hmm. or some some set piece. Yeah, you know, like you look at something like uh, like Orb. You know, mm-hmm. which has a Zeppelin attack. It does. <laughs> uh, you know, like there's like plenty of, or, or uh, the next episode we're doing that he wrote, which is other uh, revenge society, mm-hmm. which has a prison escape. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's rarely this cut and dry, uh, but this is just people talking. It is. Um, and I like it. It's a, it's a, it's our first like 21 focus episode really as he mm-hmm. becomes a character. Yeah. He's uh, he's good in this. Like I like it too. It's, mm-hmm. it's not uh, outstanding or anything, yeah. but pretty good nice and nice in the middle yeah. uh as you mentioned written, written by doc hammer this originally aired november 8th 2009 uh we're learning about 21 becoming a badass and what he does without 24 yes to complete him yeah him becoming uh the general basically he uh, uh takes on this mythical status among the uh among the henchmen as two ton 21 um mm-hmm. yeah uh, we learned how he got buff. We saw, you know, a couple of, uh, we, 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 we've seen hints of this, you know, uh, or earlier on in the season, you know, it goes out, he's bursting, he's bursting out of his, uh, out of his costume and he's got the wrist blades, uh, things like that. Yeah. Uh, Wolverine claws <laughs> the, uh, uh, the design was not exactly like they wanted. Uh, he's, you know, 21 still ended up being heavier than they liked. They really wanted him to basically just be Glenn Danzig. Yeah. Who who is a weird flavor of doughy? Yes, <laughs> uh, that cool. um, the the book and commentary on this episode are both very strange. Mm-hmm. The book just says what happens in the episode. It does with very little analysis, and the commentary has a little bit of analysis, and but very very little uh, as well. Um, it's also, I think, one of the funnier. Yeah, once yeah. they run. Uh, I'm a child, but all of the stuff about how balls were like horrible design because they have to be a little bit cooler than the body mm-hmm. is is very funny to me. I feel like <laughs> I, 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 I feel like that's li- we literally had that conversation on a show. Yeah, actually, about how they, they, inconvenient they, testicles are. Yeah, I love these dudes. Yeah, you know, it's because yeah. it's it's the kind of shit I think about. Like, yeah, I mean, this is a horrible fucking design, yeah. man. It, <laughs> and and they're goddamn hideous. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, no, and, uh, but the, the part of the commentary about Danzig, where like <laughs> Doc Hammer is talking about how the first record is great, and uh, Jackson wouldn't like it because he doesn't like modern rock. I was just like, yeah, boy, I also fucking hate modern rock. <laughs> like <laughs> yeah. you know, middle middle of the road hard rock is one of the worst genres. I think. Mother, <laughs> that's, just, that's that fucking shit sucks, dude. <laughs> like, <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I, I had a moment of relating to them, uh, really appreciating Doc's genuineness <laughs> and Jackson's politeness, dissing something that his friend really liked. Yeah, yeah. The Doc got really defensive about it. <laughs> yeah, very defensive. Because uh, he, he loves the first Danzig album. <laughs> yeah, that's like good reason to be defensive. I know. Oh, man. <laughs> just like what you like doc it's fine yeah oh man i, I also like anytime we see uh 21's uh civilian life uh which is oh, which yeah. is good uh you know his uh his larp crew his uh uh his his, his podcast atomic comics collection connection 
Uh, yep. All of that is very good. Uh, not even like in a like dorks or you know just being <laughs> dorks are funny kind of way. It, it's it's humanizing, you know. Yeah. Yeah. His mom is a really well observed detail. Yeah, yeah. The, the, just screeching from off screen. <laughs> doing just straight up king of comedy. Uh which yeah. is which is great. Uh there's 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 a line in the in the art book that I don't understand. So they're talking about like, you know, we <laughs> we, we 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 write uh twenty one we we, we we write Gary's home life like we imagine Ken Bloom's life is. You know, mm-hmm. just their 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 buddy, the author of the art book or whatever. And Doc says uh, at one point, just talking about his, his, you know, his family life or whatever, he says, Ken has nephews that number in the 30s. I have no idea what Doc is trying to say about that. I think, he's, I think he's trying to say he has lots of nephews, not that they're in their 30s. Yeah, I, I, lots world. of nephews. What does it mean that, that, that he has lots of nephews, though? <laughs> it's just that oh, it, it, does I, it give him extra, I, un- I, extra uncle energy? <laughs> Like he has super uncle energy and he has siblings who uh, are incredibly fecund. Yeah. Like okay. he's known as the brother of the goat in the woods with a thousand young. <laughs> the, un- the uncle next to the woods with a thousand nephews. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, yeah. Avunculoth. <laughs> Avunculoth. Oh, I've worked for Avunculoth. <laughs> oh, Vunkulov, my favorite uh, Cthulhu deity. Yeah, he, he slips me some beer at a party. It's great. Yeah, because it shows up at your wedding in the bathroom. I was like, is this where all the dicks hang out? And you're like, oh, that's, this guy's great. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, yeah it, it's it's a pretty wild line. It's not how I imagine Ken Plume. I think they're trying to say he just has a lot of stuff going on. <laughs> It's a cool way to say it. Yeah, real mover and shaker. Number of nephews yeah. this guy's have. You wouldn't believe it. Yeah. It's like how many keys you have in a key ring. <laughs> you know, showing how important you are. You know? Oh, uh, but 21 is, is traumatized by his friend's death. This is introducing uh, his quest for revenge and him holding on to 24 skull and talking to it uh, like Swearingen in Deadwood. Yeah. Um, you know, this this will le- eventually, uh, you know, become more important. Mm-hmm. Kind of. Kind of, um, yeah, and it's yeah. It, it is it is made ambiguous whether an office is in his head or there are actual ghosts present. Uh, it's yes. uh, it ultimately comes down that it, that that it is in uh, in uh, in his in his head. But uh, he, when, he, when he imagines a ghost, though, he also imagines uh, Mister Wendell. Yes, uh, Mister Wendell, aka or the spiritual gu- guru. Yes, uh, yeah, they had, which is, is very funny for it being in his head. He added Mr. Wendell. <laughs> um, it's not actually Wendell. It's like Papa Ogunde or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I, it's it's I, the I, guy from the, from the Mr. Wendell video is the. Uh, yes. yes. Yeah. Uh, but he's uh, he's he's got that got got that around, uh, obviously dealing with some uh, PTSD. And like we said, mm-hmm. this episode is low on action, but it's it's pretty sweet. I I I have a I am I am fond I am fond of how good hearted this ultimately ends up being. I really like the uh, the Doc and Doctor Girlfriend stuff. I am slightly less sold on the Monarch stuff because yeah, I don't feel yeah. like it developed very much. Like it, it's an interesting idea, the idea of him, you know, his whole operation is kind of on autopilot. Yes, you know uh, now. Uh, but other than like, I just don't really, they don't really go anywhere with this crisis. No, like at the end no. of it, it's like, is in crisis. Like, Oh my, you know, my wife is, is showing her, her fanny uh, in the magazines. And I got these two twins, you know, the pupae twins living with me and they suck, but they don't really continue this plot thread enough for me. Right. You know, I wanted the monarch in crisis uh, and he's kind of monarchs his way through it. Mm-hmm. So um, we start off with uh, the cold open. Uh, we're in the henchman bar. Uh, the 10 forward lounge um, and henchmen are arguing about cryptids yeah. uh, saying which one is the oldest. They're talking about uh champ, you know, who is the biggest one, a lesser known cryptid. Mm-hmm. And then Nessie, who is the famous Loch Ness monster. Yeah. Um, and as they're kind of bickering back and forth, uh, 21 says from across the bar, Ogapogo and everybody goes quiet. It's kind of like, Oh, Oh God. <laughs> He's, <laughs> we woke him up um, and he walks over and just kind of gives this monologue saying like, OK, yes, Nessie's a piece of driftwood. Champ is a submarine. Uh, Ogopogo is a plesiosaur. So therefore, Ogopogo is the best. Um, yeah. And he ends up like threatening them with his wrist blade. You know, and they they, oh. they they panic and tell him that he's right. Like, of course you are. Yeah, no, just obviously whatever you say. 
Well, one of them is is mouthing off. Yeah, like it's one of those things where somebody recognizes him and the other person doesn't. Yeah, which is always a cute, cute scene, <laughs> you know, uh, until he realizes he's the legend. He's two ton two ton twenty one. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, and he's like, "Oh man, you know, I haven't seen him since the car accident." And he's like, "Car accident? <laughs> you know, twenty four died in a car intentional." Uh, <laughs> That's such a good did, line. <laughs> did you did you remember or did it trickle down to you? Uh, when you were in school, the uh, driver's ed thing of no longer saying car accident. And, and no, I've always I, I've always called it collision because well, I grew I, me, that's, yeah I grew I grew uh, up with a with a state highway patrolman. What, what's that? That's what they wanted to, me to start saying mm-hmm. in high school because they're like accident implies nobody is at fault, and we need you to understand that somebody is always at fault. Yeah, so yeah. you have to call them collisions. Mm-hmm. And I just I remember that being a very weird thing for my like out of shape part time gym teacher, driver's ed <laughs> teacher, to say that like somebody is always at fault. Yeah, I, like, I, yeah. I don't think that's true. I'm a teenager, but I don't think that's true. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> Yeah, like I mean, at least the way you're saying it doesn't feel true. The like like, collision Mm -hmm. is literally like that. That that is a more literal definition. Like me spilling me me spilling my pop in in a car (laughs) is technically uh, technically an accident too. Me pissing in my car is an accident. Sure. (laughs) Well, me pissing in your car is an intentional. Yeah. But only when I get uh, out of line, you know. <laughs> a collision also contains everything known. It's like a superset. Yes, you yeah. know, like some of them accidents. Sometimes somebody just fucked up. Yeah. Sometimes somebody rammed somebody on purpose. You know, it's not like you go on to the demolition derby to watch car accidents. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, that that whoa, was. <laughs> whoa, whoa, what's happening? <laughs> that, that, that was hammered into me really early. Like they're 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 colli- they're, they're collisions. Uh, also, uh, uh, never say you're sorry if you're in a uh, collision. If there's uh, any kind of incident, you know, like because if you Why get out. Because if you if you say oh god I'm so sorry that is uh, an emission of a uh, fault so you don't do that ah. yeah just so, just never to... never too kids are never too young to teach them never to admit fault <laughs> <laughs> it was more tied up with like oh like like you know you say you say I'm yeah. sorry that's going to cost you a lot of money is is kind of yeah. came don't out talk to cops. yeah, yeah. <laughs> pretty much yeah. <laughs> unless they're your dad and telling you how to save money if you end up getting into know. a car accident yeah. <laughs> uh, 21, you know, the, the henchman who called an accident gets demoted to henchman mm-hmm. 86 and puts 86 through, or, you know, 112 uh, on some kind of horrible duty. Uh, mm-hmm. The other henchman gets promoted yes. at this point as allergies. He didn't want to do it. So <laughs> uh, we cut over to the monarch and doctor, Mrs. The Monarch, eating dinner at their huge table uh, in uh, Phantom Limb's former mansion mm-hmm. uh, here. Um, and monarch's got this interview with a uh, modern enemy, uh, monthly and he has a zit coming on uh this is very well observed all the the stuff here with monarch yeah uh and that idea we can feel is it like well before it actually happens oh yeah you got clouds over the horizon i can tell i can smell it in the air yeah yeah it's 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 getting ready to bloom i know it um you know and dr mrs the monarch is you know is kind of like not uh, not really uh acknowledging this is more just like hey we should probably be worried that about henchman 21 and what he's doing uh he kind of seems to you know ever since his friend died um like the monarch not only doesn't remember 24's death kind of doesn't seem to know who 21 is at least in this conversation and all that he's noticed yeah. since the explosion is that th- people seem to be a little bit more disciplined so he's just yeah. he's checked out Again, something where that side of the emotional uh, part of the episode kind of falls flat with me. Mm Because, like, this this version of Monarch, who's totally oblivious, feels very different than the version that bonds with 21 at the end. Yes. To me, in a way that doesn't feel like movement. Mm Mm-hmm. You know? Uh, 21, you know, he's got the the best uh, group of henchmen and villainy, all these uh, these things. He also hired a chef who gives them this dinner uh, that is served over a bed of rocket and sunchoke. Yes. Uh, rocket is arugula. I don't know what sunchoke is. I, look, um, I, I looked this up. Sunchoke is, uh, it's a root vegetable. It's the root bulb of a, um, of a sunflower. Uh, oh, it is scary. also, it is also called an, uh, um, a, Jer- a Jerusalem artichoke, uh, is what it is. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Also a 2015 movie apparently. Huh? So, yeah. yeah. Um, but you know, like, 
so we cut over and we see 21 uh you know what what he's you know what, what dr mr the monarch is worried about is, is him talking to 24's 24's skull uh which he keeps in keeps in his room we're not seeing the other side of this conversation just yet we're eventually mm-hmm. going to get a force ghost of uh 24 uh mm-hmm. we are we're we are just seeing uh we're just seeing the the you know the inane things that 21 says he's just continuing the 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 conversations he would have been having with his buddy yeah uh, and they're they're you know no great shakes or anything yeah uh Monarch doesn't see a problem with this because he keeps his best friend around. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we see uh, first appearance, Mr. Mostly Bittens, yeah. who 21 sat on yep. uh, to kill. Uh, I think it's very funny that they stuffed him in a position of terror. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it, it just, it's the same joke as Smithers. Smithers yeah, in the exactly. coffin, right? Yeah. I, I, I love that joke, though, of like preserving somebody. And because usually when you preserve somebody, you try to make them look very peaceful. You know, just preserving them in the moment of absolute yeah. abject terror of their death. <laughs> um, Mr. Mosley Mittens is to call that because he has three white feet. I love it. Not four. That's a really cute name for a cat. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. The, the the way this show names cats. Um, and, you know, he's an amazing cat. He would fetch a rubber band and bring it back. Mm-hmm. Of course, the monarch would not understand that you should not play with rubber bands with a cat because if they break it into parts and need it, uh, it will kill them. Mm. Uh, yeah. So mm. strings are no good for a cat. No, um, no. And our and our rubber band specifically uh, is very easy to chew apart. You want something that has a little bit more. Yeah, more... Do, do, do it with a with a with a hair tie. That's what I that's what I do. Hair tie is just fine. Yeah, rubber band can kill your cat. Hmm. Uh, and no tinsel when you have a cat. Oh Same no, thing. no. Yeah, yeah. You start swallowing it. You're lucky if it if you had to pull it out of their butts. You don't want to pull though because uh, that's a way to cut intestines. Yeah. In half. Um. So, yeah, hmm. no strings. No. Be very care or be very careful with strings. Yes. Yeah, uh, uh, this this gets interrupted by uh, Monarch noticing that Doctor Mrs. The Monarch is feeding the moppets under the table. <laughs> uh, I love that so much. Like, because they he's just like, "Get out of here! If you do this, they're gonna keep him back." And they're like, "All oh, right, Gavna, keep your pants on." And they just like walk away. The moppets are so fucking weird. <laughs> yeah, just very off putting, intentionally so. Yeah. Oh mm-hmm. gosh, <laughs> and they're not even just like sitting at the table. It's uh, mm-hmm. so good. Yeah, um, but you know he, he he hates the food. You know he just wants to he just like let's just throw this away. It tastes like soap, uh, is what he uh, is what he says. I've never had uh, sun choke, so I don't know. Arugula tastes good. Yeah. It doesn't taste like soap. Arugula. It's spicy, peppery, and bitter. Anyway, yeah. yeah. Uh, so twenty one decides that it is time to let him in <laughs> on uh, his uh, his project uh, that he's working on, uh, Project Lazarus which despite the name is not about bringing him back to life. It is about getting vengeance. And he has a list of suspects, uh, people he, that he mm-hmm. believes uh, are responsible for, uh, for 24's death, starting with the venture family and then going down to the bottom at just happenstance. <laughs> yeah. Really, really dumbass list. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And that's not, that's not his first name. It was first name for the project. Mm-hmm. He rattles off his drafts, like, you know, project dragon's fury and shit like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we cut over. It looks like 21 uh, is strangling Hank in his sleep, but it turns out it's hatred. Yeah. Uh, and he's doing an action man special. Yeah. He's trying to keep him on his toe on their toes. I don't want to, I don't want to fake dismember you boys every night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, again, flashback to the action man shooting an unloaded gun into Rusty's mouth every morning. <laughs> Not today, Rusty. <laughs> 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 he's, just, um, he's just trying trying to get them to understand you have a panic button you could like yeah. to hit it you know you need to use it you mm-hmm. know you guys do not have uh clones anymore yeah um you know he mentions like you know in the future the eel oil will be eaten by the cave monsters so they need to be ready <laughs> and dean's like oh that's who took my copy of the uh the time machine <laughs> I love, uh, yeah. I love the hatred is so bored uh but he's just reading off of dean's bookshelf <laughs> He, we up, he's reading the whole giant boy detective series. Yeah. And I love how just game hatred is for everything. Again, mm-hmm. explain my deep love for Sergeant Hatred. <laughs> he just loves it. Hatred says yes. And yeah, very much so. Yeah. Uh, you know, hatred, uh, tells Hank that they, you know, they have to hit the button, uh, and then says, what is the next book in the giant boy detective series to grab yeah. on his way out? Yeah. Then Hank wants a um, dollar for emotional damages. <laughs> Again, yeah, sassy. Very, Hank. Uh, love sassy. Hank. Uh, we cut over to the monarch and Dr. Mrs. The monarch under the covers, uh, getting ready for sex, uh, talking about, uh, you know, this little piggy, um, you know, and, and pissing on each other and finding a home for the little piggy, AKA a vagina. 
yeah, uh, yeah. going on here. Uh, and this all gets ruined when the monarch comes out of the blankets and Dr. Mrs. The Monarch sees his face. Yes. Yeah, he believes that it's just a zit, but it actually is this horrible allergic reaction. Uh, he is so swollen that they, uh, I don't I don't know the name of it, but she, she said, says that he looks like the elephant man. Like it's, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, John it's Merrick, very, it's, it's, it's literally strong. right there. So, yeah. he, he looks like uh, uh, the Oracle from Midsummer. He does. Yeah. Um, um, they, I, I like in the commentary, they talk about like, uh, we, we spent like a half an hour in the booth trying to figure out how to make the monarch's voice sound different, you know, like pulling on the lip or whatever. They couldn't find a way that made him intelligible. So they just kept it, kept it just, mm-hmm. just, uh, Jackson public's uh, regular monarch voice. Monarch voice. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they didn't want to, to strain. Um, we come back. It looks like hatred has come back for another night, but ter- so Hank hits the panic button, but it turns out it's 21, mm-hmm. uh, 21 dressed as hatred. Uh, he falls into a bag and the henchmen are there. They're using uh, 21 speak. One <laughs> is mitten box. The other is out of stock over. <laughs> uh, so, so 21 uh, tries to wake Dean up and notices that he has an erection. Uh, you know, they're like, oh, should we, should we send him down or something like that? Uh, you know, and like, no, no, no. You don't need to see this. It's grim. <laughs> I, love, I love that as an adjective for seeing a kid with a, with a night boater. Grim. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man. Oh, God. <laughs> um, yeah. So... <laughs> <laughs> they they end up getting the kids, uh, but uh, you know, hatred sees this and we you know, wakes up Rusty saying like, "Oh, I was down there masturbating at the computer, masturbating <laughs> in front of the computer." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we got a dart in the neck. Uh, and Rusty, you know, just as supposed to be like worried about it, you know, like the you know uh, uh, his bodyguard being darted and his kid disappearing. He's like, "That's disgusting. Why would you say yeah. you're masturbating at the computer? Oh, we all do it." <laughs> Yeah, it's like, well, yeah, but we don't. Very dated that everyone doesn't have their own computer. Yeah, like the idea of having to masturbate in front of the the family computer or mm-hmm. not on your phone, like a human. You know, yep, like homegrown Simpson stuff. Yeah, the yeah, um, yeah this, uh, I I like this a lot. Um, <laughs> so uh, Rusty immediately knows, like, well, that's a monarch uh, dart. You know, do we get him or something? Mm-hmm. And Hatred's like, I used to be a villain and I abduct little boys. So if there's anyone who knows the rules around <laughs> abduction, yeah. Gildoth, old Hatred, we're going to do this the Hatred way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so. The Hatred way is not particularly inspiring. No, no, it's not. And also it doesn't really, it doesn't pan out. This is, this is some of the least competent Hatred's ever been, actually. Yeah, this is pretty bad Hatred. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, he's not a great bodyguard, even in the best of times. Oh, of course. He yeah. cares a lot, mm-hmm. you know, he's but better, he, he again, opposite of, of, of Brock. He's a better nanny than bodyguard and Brock yeah. is a better bodyguard than nanny. Although Brock is still pretty yeah. good. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so, um, hatred calls doctor, a girlfriend and says, Hey, I'm going to blow your house up. If you don't hand the boys over, like yeah. what, what, what's the, what, what's the deal? And, you know, she obviously doesn't know anything about this. You know, it's, this is 21 going rogue. Uh, so she lies to cover it up. She doesn't want Monarch to, you know, to flip out. He's already dealing with enough. So, so she says, oh, it's Modern Enemy. You know, they're just, they're, they're, they're talking, they're talking to me. And Monarch immediately gets jealous thinking, oh, they're going to turn this into a thing about you, is, aren't they? Um, well, specifically about her and her uh, dirty pillows. Yes. Like it's going to be, yeah. Yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be a Maxim uh, d- uh, d- uh, cheesecake piece. Dr. Aki. Right? Yeah. yeah. So, a docu- uh, Dr. Aki situation. Dr. What? The, the, the Dr. Aki from uh, Final Fantasy, The Spirits Within. Oh, God. Yeah. Maxim's oh, head. God. Yeah. Okay. There we go. <laughs> Jeez. Wow. That's a, that's a cut. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, it, it certainly was. Wow. <laughs> oh man uh, you think but, that if you were to have sex with dr aki from final fantasy the spirits within when you pulled your ding dong out there'd be like cg stuff on it i don't even like, like mercury like liquid i, I figure it'd be like wireframe just kind of hanging off of there you know yeah yeah it'd be weird it'd be like spider-man webbed up your dick <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> <you>. <laughs> I really don't also, want to if you fuck Spider-Man. I imagine you pull out. There's like a bunch of webbing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. If, you're, if you're in the spinnerets, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. I, think, I think that would kill him. Actually, yeah. Huh. Brown Widow coming this season. Yeah, a little bit later. Uh, Brent yeah. lights 
Yeah. So, uh, but uh, it just figures, okay, this is a time. Also, when you, you know, when you talk about me, uh, you'd be sure to use the words genius and visionary, obviously make it all about me. Yeah. Uh, they're waiting. Hatred summarizing a giant boy detective book to Rusty who, who could not be more bored. Uh, Dr. And Mrs. The Monarch calls and says she'll meet uh, hatred at the old observatory in an hour. Yeah. We cut over uh, to the boys um, who are in like some kind of cabin uh, under buckets with water dripping on them. (laughs) And uh, 21, you know, is trying to explain they've been subjected to the dreaded uh, Chinese water torture. You're slowly going Um, insane. (laughs) Yeah. And they they don't care. Like, it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, I don't. uh, I think they say it's like falling asleep under an air conditioner. (laughs) Um, (laughs) You know, I I care. When was the first time you saw the Chinese water torture? Uh, It's one of those. uh, Probably. It was probably something like I was probably just watching a like late night history channel special. Those amazing like history of torture, medieval history yeah, of drugs, yeah. history of sex. Yeah. Just any of those kind of things like history channel after 1 a.m. fucking ruled. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, yeah. It became very little history. Yeah. Yeah. Just uh, most mostly real salacious stuff. And then it became uh, and then I tuned out when it was all alien shit. So. Yeah, aliens and Hitler and their whatever they got up to. Yeah, and the Hitlers um, of the third and the aliens of the Third Reich. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I love aliens of the Third Reich. <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, it's like you know the water. Uh, is this where they make the, they talk about how the the water smells bad because it's the water they use to clean up the fucking the toilets? <laughs> yeah, that's that's it. pretty gross on Twenty One's part, man. Yeah, yeah it is. Uh, you know, how do you do that? <laughs> and they said, yeah, the water smells like pee. And it's like literally just a mop bucket, which yuck. Yeah. You yeah. Give these kids fucking staff infections, like no. horrible pink eye. Mm, no, no, no. Giardia. Awful. No. Yeah. So <laughs> Hatron and Rusty drive up. Uh Rusty is not impressed uh by uh Malice. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, because he's he's literally been here before he went to a party at Hatred's house. Uh Hatred's able to get in by logic bombing a robot guard. Yeah, I, I love this. <laughs> yeah. This is very cute. The performance is really good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, here, you know, they're programmed to answer 700 questions, but not malarkey. Let's see, um, you know, Dr. Girlfriend, uh, calls the monarch, uh, you know, the monarch calls her like, where are you? Mm-hmm. You know, you left. And, uh, she says, oh, I went to go meet the modern enemy people to do a photo shoot. He notices that she's wearing a robe. It's like, what are you wearing under it? Mm-hmm. She reveals and it's, uh, you know, her underwear. Yeah. Uh, and he's furious. Yeah. You know, uh, so I'm going to go off arching. She's like, no, don't go do that. Because if he leaves, he's going to find out about this whole kidnapping thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and she doesn't want uh, twenty one to get uh to, to get the brunt, you know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, she sends sends the the moppets to go stop him. Yes. There. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> hatred needs some gear, and he runs uh he runs Rusty back to back to his old house where Princess Tiny Feet is, uh, and he uses that as a uh, as an opportunity to 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 to, to, to snoop on her, and you know we, we we got a little bit of this before, and we're gonna see a lot more of it later. But Princess Tiny Foot's a freak. You know, yeah. Um, yeah, I, 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 <laughs> I say I, I, I say that non judgmentally, but she, but she's, uh, but she is, uh, uh, you know, in there with a bunch of dudes, and they're doing uh, some varsity level king play. Uh, you know, it's like who's that? And Rusty says, "I can't tell. Everyone looks the same in a leather mask, and they're just yeah, in there doing kinky bad. pony play stuff." <laughs> and I love this. Hatred says, "Like, why are you telling me this? Lie to me!" And just a uh, the, the, the top ten Rusty line. Okay, they're rehearsing for a play. Is there a non? musical mostly nude version of oklahoma <laughs> it's very good, it's very good. I, I'm, I'm way into uh the delivery on it where he's like oh you know he's riding him that's interesting and he's going <laughs> lie to me god damn you <laughs> like should be obvious if yeah. you're any kind of any kind of bro rusty yeah yeah you don't you don't twist the knife like this you don't be that brutal come on well here's the thing though he would with brock he you know, would, like that's yeah. their their dynamic. Yeah, that's the, it was a lot more adversarial, and hatred is a is a softy. Mm-hmm. You know, he doesn't want this; he wants a family. Yeah, you know. So. Oh, yeah. This is just the, this betrayal that uh, the the mm-hmm. hatred is living through. Oh, terrible! But mm-hmm. uh, I mean, it's not betrayal. They're they're separated. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, it feels like one. But. Yes, to him. Um, Dean tries to explain, you know, this is a breach of guild bylaws, and 21 says this has nothing to do with guild. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is about the murder of my best friend. And they're like, who? I was like, you didn't <laughs> notice it. How dare you? And Hank's like, yeah, that was it also the day that I saw a thousand versions of me exploded on my lawn? <laughs> <You know? laughs> like, 
a, a real a good like get over yourself moment yeah yeah you know uh 21 you know going on this like vengeance quest which he learns throughout the season and kind of learns in this episode but still mm-hmm. keeps it up yeah for a while again the way that this feels like it doesn't really resolve yeah character yeah. arcs to me um or or really advance them very much it, mm-hmm. it like false resolves them it's like a mimic <laughs> um but he he does need to get over himself like talking to the boys yeah like the Avengers have had things universally worse than anyone on the Monarch side. Yes. Basically. Yeah. Like, um, you know, it's, 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 it's pretty rough. There's a lot of trauma. Like the, the, the worst thing that happens to people on the Monarch side is they just, they, they get darted and maybe fall asleep or die. Yeah. yeah or, or Brock Samson, like, you yeah. know, twist their neck 360. Yeah. And that's, but a, they're not waking up with the action man putting a pistol in their mouth every morning. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like, you know, <laughs> It's weird where, like, a quick death is somehow more merciful than living as a venture. An entire lifetime of being a venture. Oh, God. Of being a dean. What's that like? <laughs> being a dean. <laughs> yeah. So, so 21 gets them, gets them caught up. Uh, and mm-hmm. you know, they, because, because they ask him, like, hey, so, like, this happened months ago. Why are you, why are you just now coming, coming after us? You know, and so we get this montage of, you know, the, the, the of what happened. You know, they're at the funeral, they're giving a 21 dart salute. Uh, mm-hmm. and 21 left the game for a while. He went back to, uh, <laughs> went back to, uh, living mm-hmm. at his mom's. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the Elm Street Wolf Pack or whatever. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> Larping and lifting. Yeah, and uh, he's podcasting his life story. This is important. Uh yeah. it was it was two thousand nine, so I would forgive him for using a headset mic to uh to do a podcast we didn't know any better back then. Sure. Well also don't let Cole's podcast supremacy stop you if all you have is a headset mic. Hey, yeah. Your no. story. Well what's what's important is your content. Yeah. Uh the uh you know again kind of referring to his origin of being abdu- abducted on a middle school uh field trip <laughs> to Washington DC um, a lot of him training with a kid, a fat kid on a big big wheel <laughs> like one of Ken Plume's multitudinous uh nephews <laughs> yep. you know uh eventually cutting to him uh like him larping, I love him practicing the mystical arts where the guy, you know, it's a reference to the viral video. Yeah, yeah. The lightning bolt uh kid. But him just walking up and punching the guy in the face. <laughs> <laughs> these, kids, these dudes still hang out with him. Like the the LARP crew, his wolf pack still hangs out with him. Mm-hmm. It just seems often to be like actually violent, I guess. I don't know. Like no more LARPing, just hitting. <laughs> uh he you know, he kills this T Rex on the moon. It turns out this is a, a you know, a hol- holodeck yeah. danger room kind of situation here. Um and uh, eventually, you know, with honor, he returned to his unit, vowing to never lose a man to his cowardice. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is where he realized he's like, oh, like, you know, I killed D. I killed 24, mm-hmm. you know, and this is also, again, I know what they're going for in this, yeah. but I don't know how well it comes across in the text. The idea that he's the realization he's supposed to be coming here that doesn't stick is that 24 died due to the life, you know, to the life. Yeah. Like he killed him by just being a henchman and also yeah like, just they, they were just they were just co- like codependently enabling each other <laughs> yeah yeah like the, in no way did 21 kill 24 no he wasn't actually like, responsible it, for the explosion or what happened in the in the in the uh car it was just like well, yeah 20, they were they were both gets to make his own choices yeah you know <laughs> <laughs> true yeah like he got to be a henchman too like this this falls so flat to me like the i don't think that it, this establishes 21 as as cool guy now mm-hmm. but all of the character movement with him and the monarch uh, i think suck yeah i don't think they do a good job of it and it's the thing that stops this episode from being like great to me mm-hmm. and just being you know good on one end like yeah. the rusty doctor girlfriend stuff we're gonna get to is a really good yeah like cute little well-observed moment mm-hmm. but this this stuff is very flat to me yeah um yeah yeah you know so, and, and not super funny like there's not a whole lot of jokes in in this part either right you know? right so uh, but no. Dean, but Dean comforts him. We all did, Gary. We all did. I, yeah. I just love Dean calling him by his name. <laughs> yeah. But, well, later when they're like, "We're in Gary's tree fort. We took a cab back and forth an hour ago." It's very cute. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, the monarch is going to go try to drink off his his misery mm-hmm. uh, here at, at ten forward, and the bartender uh, tells him to get out. Uh, he won't leave without his fresca. Um, <laughs> You know, and uh, the bar is closing. You know, what did you say, you insolent soon to be corpse? Um, the idea is they don't recognize him. You yeah, know, there's no service after midnight. That's the General 21's orders. Mm-hmm. And he's like, fuck, General 21. Yeah. You know, he's, he's, he's losing his grip. 
right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Cut back out to uh, Princess Tiny Feet's place. Hatred is sobbing and it starts raining. And he just uh, screams, no, what would Giant Boy Detective do in this like legitimately pretty good looking shot? <laughs> yeah. I do wonder what Giant Boy Detective would do if he found out that his ex-wife was... Uh, he probably wouldn't be able to fit through the door. <laughs> yeah. He, he, he just says, I would show up at the window. <laughs> Oh no, <laughs> baby! Why? <laughs> oh man! Uh, so, uh, but uh, uh, the uh, the boys, uh, mm-hmm. Hank and uh, Hank and Dean, as they're leaving the uh, the tree fort, and this is a revelation that uh, they're not in like some kind of you know weird little Unabomber shack. It's just li- literally t- twenty one as a treehouse behind the behind the place mm-hmm. uh they're around the corner and they run into the monarch and they don't they don't recognize him at first uh dean thinks he might be yeah. a kindly old groundskeeper like oh we're just gonna let's just do the back third of this as a, a scooby-doo episode why not yeah <laughs> do, do you think that in 10 years dean would refer to to the monarch as a cryptid on a podcast just absolutely brutally i mean i mean uh, br- unintentionally brutally yeah uh, i think yeah. just uh just it would be it would be uh kind of a a good-hearted callousness i think yeah yeah, that, that sounds about right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the uh, but they, they just kind of go. The monarch just says, you know, we'll call it. I'll call you a cab. He's over it. You know, he's yeah, not going to yeah. try to kidnap them or anything. No. Uh, and then my my favorite scene of the show emotionally is Rusty and Doctor Mrs. The Monarch just sitting at the observatory. Yeah. Like hatred is too despairing to do this. So Rusty went and did the meet, and they're just shooting the shit. Yeah. You know. Um. Like mm-hmm. oh, like uh, you know, the, hey, this telescope. It's actually a big laser. You know. Uh, kind of over it, but they've all both just been in the game for a long time. Yeah, yeah. And this is the first time they've actually like really like talked w- w- without mm-hmm. her fake seducing him and without her just you know being a real creep to her, you know. And or, so yeah, without him hitting on her. Uh, yeah, yeah. With, with, without him being a real creep to her, yes, that, that, that's what I intended yeah. to say. Yeah, and uh, no, they, they've got good back and forth, and they're just kind of bonding yeah. over this, just kind of living in this in this weird world, you know, like just, uh, she, 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 of course he, he's surprised that she watched the old rusty venture show, but like, she's married mm-hmm. to a guy who's obsessed with the dude. So, yeah, of course. you know, yeah, she probably watched it for research. Yeah. You know, uh, and they, they're both just, you know, talking about like, oh man, you know, us, us together, who would have thought, you know, what would the neighbors think? And this is rusty, like saying kind of flirty things, but not being gross. Just be, just kind of being know? fun a little bit. Like, yeah, it's, yeah. Like, a, like a fun dynamic. These two have a lot in common. Yeah. You know, <laughs> uh, and her being, well, you know what? Uh, I don't know what the neighbors would think when one of them is auntie matter and the other one's flying squid. <laughs> you know, it's it's a really weird world. Yeah. Um, you know, and then eventually just like, anyway, I haven't seen the boys. Like, if you tried calling them, it's like, ah, <laughs> hatred, <laughs> you know. Uh, Hatred's worst, a r- worst bodyguard. Hatred's a, a mess, oh. dude. You saw it. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Pop, we are Gary's Playhouse. We are Tails. <laughs> Very good. Oh, man. So the boys are back at home. False alarm. It's everything. Everything is fine. Yeah. We, uh, we missed a scene. There's a there's a scene that's missing in the notes, which, again, in terms of things that don't come to fruition, uh-huh. is the monarch leaving and running into the, the uh, Moppets. Oh, yeah. Where yeah. the Moppets try to stop him, and he uh, mad dogs them mm-hmm. and everything. And it sounds very definitive. Like, if you try to fuck with me, you know, ever again, I'm going to kill you. Hmm. We know the monarch doesn't like the Moppets, but it's not really an ultimatum or anything. No, no, it doesn't you bear know? out. Yeah. yeah. Um, but um, Monarch, he, he sulks his way up to the treehouse, right? Um, and <laughs> Gary has himself under the bucket. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just doing his own penance. Uh, getting his own pink eye. Yeah. 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 Pink eye penance. Uh, you know, he asked for the password. He's like, oh, wait, you know, I forgot. Oh, wait, I remember. I'm the fucking monarch. Let me in. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, when he when he comes in, he thinks that uh, the torture has given him the second sight so he can see the monarch's soul. <laughs> He's like, no, 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 this is just a fancy salad. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I'm, you know, why, what are you doing up here? He's like, well, I'm sulking because Dr. Mrs. The Monarch is out getting these nude pictures taken. Yeah. You know, uh, and he says, like, you'd like this. You'd, you wouldn't you? You're trying to replace me, mm-hmm. you know? Uh, and this is where 21 uh, says, like, you know, I, like, I couldn't do that. Um, he's like, well, you're arching without me. Like, you had the Venture Boys up here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, <laughs> uh, how could you tell? <laughs> you know, I mean. Mon- I love this monarch line. Nobody, I can smell them. Hank wears more Stetson cologne than a gigolo. And Dean smells like Selsun blue. 
which is yeah. just, you know you often don't get a like a, this smell characterization out of a visual medium mm-hmm. you know but like of course these teenage boys would fucking stink <laughs> yeah the jovan must gift back yeah you know the, the uh so uh you know and 21 said he was going to torture them for a murder that he might have committed but he doesn't actually hate them yeah you know he doesn't come naturally to him but it does make him proud to serve in the monarch's ranks. This is also going to be contradicted by 21's turn at the end mm-hmm. of uh, the season where he's just like, I, you know, I don't think hate is good. Mm-hmm. Uh, here, you know? yeah. um, so he's like, you know, Hey, do you want to hang out? I can play cards. We can watch Josie and the Pussycats slow down, slow down during the Rosario Dawson parts, <laughs> you know? Uh, and the monarch says no. And his version of, of saying, I love you is basically saying, I'm not going to send you for treason. Uh, you can play in the tree fort for one night before I burn it down. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, they just get, get, get back to the old way. You are the mighty, mighty monarch. You know, don't ever forget that. Just, uh, kind of setting, setting the, 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 uh, relationship back to where it was. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and post credits, um, you know, the idea is that, uh, Somebody has crossed off the ventures off the list, and then 21 walks in uh, with the issue of Modern Enemy Monthly to see that the skull has moved. Mm-hmm. So something supernatural is perhaps about. Perhaps. But it also could just be somebody fucking with uh, with 21. Or it could yeah. have not happened at all. No. Apologies for the noise in the background. We're almost done. <laughs> uh, my apartment is, is being a hell week. This yeah. Week. yeah. Um, I like talking through this episode, make me like it a little bit less. Mm-hmm. I, I don't. Like actually laying out all the characterization stuff and knowing what does and doesn't move satisfyingly made this feel more disappointing to me. Yeah, I can see that. You know, it's it, like it, 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 it's fun. Like yeah. in the moment, as like a, a, it doesn't kill the pacing of the season because it's still you know, it's still such a good season. You know, yeah. like if you're just if you're watching these, you know, two three episodes at a time or whatever, it is nice spending time with these characters. When you when you start thinking about, uh, like you said, what does this move across the table, and see mm-hmm. that mostly what it does is just kind of you know chase its own tail just a little bit. Um, it it it, do, it does end up being less satisfying than if you were just like able to say like, oh, okay, yeah, there's that one. What's next? You know. What's frustrating with it is that it doesn't move things enough. So, like, later, you know, one of my favorite episodes of the season, I keep referencing um, The Better Man mm-hmm. shows up. And that does really advance Orpheus's family dynamic. It does. Yeah. And characterization in a way that sticks. Mm-hmm. You know, this just feels like they're trying to take the slow road towards where they're going to get at the end of the season. And they just, uh, you know, end up setting up stuff, but then just kind of reestablishing a lot of things we already know. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, yeah, just get a little bit of a bummer as somebody who cares about this, you know, the characterization in this comedy cartoon. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, but not, not horrible or anything. Like I said, firmly middle of the road yeah. to me. Uh, next episode, where we'll be back with the Revenge Society. It's pretty exciting. Mm-hmm. Uh, sequel to the Orb episode. Um, Phantom Limb. Mm-hmm. It's return. Yeah. Uh, thanks everybody for uh, for listening. We appreciate you. Yeah. If you would like to help us out, you can go to patreon.com slash duckfeed TV and uh, get episodes a week early by giving us uh, some money by pledging some money uh, that helps mm-hmm. us out. And uh, you get cool stuff. Uh, like I said, the early release, but also a whole bunch of other shows um, uh, which are there for you if you would like to have them. But otherwise, ratings or reviews and telling friends, all of that's good. Yeah. Um, absolutely. And, uh, until next time, go team venture. venture.